So here's an interesting question. Why are katanas so incredibly heavily romanticized? Look, there really is no question that when it comes to samurai that these are huge things all over the world in terms of pop culture. In video games, in anime, in music, in pretty much anything that you could possibly imagine, they're everywhere. These warriors are typically portrayed as being loyal, fierce, and absolute downright badasses with the most legendary of legendary weapons, the katana. Able to slice through a man like butter, able to deflect bullets out of the air, and somehow be the most amazing blade that you possibly have ever seen for no inexplicable reason in every single kind of anime that you could ever watch. I swear to god, the amount of shows where I have seen a katana go up against literally every other kind of weapon and it just magically is able to cut through the entire thing like butter is absolutely goddamn ridiculous. Now the first part we have to get out of the way because this doesn't really have anything to do with the katana itself, it's more so that the katana is a sword and this means that it is almost going to be guaranteed to be romanticized because that is just, I mean, that that that's what happens in history, it, it, literally all the time. Swords are absolutely awesome, but simultaneously, they are something that themselves are very heavily romanticized. Over the course of the entirety of human history, swords have been a symbol of power, of wealth, of prestige, of pretty much anything that you can imagine to be good and awesome, they are that. I mean, the symbolic value of a sword was almost as, if not more important than the sword's viability itself as a weapon. I mean, a spear could be used for hunting, an axe could be used as a tool, but a sword? Well, while you technically could use it for some of these other things, a sword is a weapon and a weapon only. That is its primary purpose, its big purpose. It's only one that it was actually meant for. So when you combine these factors, pretty much any sword on earth is going to be romanticized, and the katana is doubly so of that. It is going to be romanticized even more. But there is a reason why, and for that, we're gonna have to go back to the beginning a little bit. You see, my friends, the Japanese blades that we think of today are something that came about during the Heian period, something that was during the 700s to the 1100s AD, as prior to this, they actually used a kind of straight sword that was based off the Chinese style. These new types of warriors, these samurai, would bring a new type of sword, these long tachi blades, which is a type of Japanese sword that was common during this feudal era that would be used for mounted combat, kind of like what you would see with a a knight for medieval combat, except for, in this situation, the samurai would primarily fight as mounted archers, not as swordsmen. Yeah, that is right. The sword was a mere sidearm, and for the majority of their history, samurai would fight as mounted archers. They would use the bow as their primary weapon in the same way as you would expect the Mongols to be fighting in. Hell, even going into the Sengoku Jidai in the 1400s, when melee combat started to become more and more common, the weapon of choice that you would have seen a samurai use at that point was either the yari, the spear, or the naginata, the thing that you can see behind me here, which is a sword staff. Really, anything that could keep an enemy at a distance, with the katana, the blade, being the secondary sidearm. I mean, it wasn't even just the samurai that had these blades in the first place. Even peasants could possess and carry swords, and they would oftentimes be pressed into service, particularly going into the Sengoku Jidai, as things became more of a quantity game rather than a quality game, because you needed a lot more soldiers in order to be able to outnumber and overwhelm the enemies that you were going up against, because armies during this period just kept on getting larger and larger and larger. The katana, though definitely still expensive, was something that was becoming more and more common, and simultaneously there was only really special ones when it was some kind of family heirloom, or if it was a tool that was going to be used for religious purposes, that kind of thing. So what happens then? Well, ironically enough, it was not actually war that would give the katana its immense reputation. It was peace instead that did it. You see, the symbolic meanings of Japanese swords would change during the largely peaceful Edo period, this being from 1603 until 1868. And it was during the 17th century, during the Tokugawa shogunate, that Japan would start to imbue this kind of symbolic value of swords into society through laws that would regulate the possession and carrying of swords in accordance to one's, you know, social status and their occasion, like if they were going to be doing something special. And thus, through a series of sword hunts, blades were gradually removed from the peasantry and and made into something that was an exclusive class symbol of the samurai themselves. A symbol and weapon where for almost 250 years there was no actual war inside of Japan and no real need for it. And so it was during this period of peace where the great and noble samurai became poorer and poorer than the commoners that they were supposedly supposed to actually be superior to. They trained with the blade. They wrote poetry about the blade. They studied and made art about the blade and about their ancestors from days long gone past. By the later half of the Edo period, samurai were, quote, blade masters without any actual way to utilize or test or get better at their skills. There was no real need for them. But the thing is, while they got poorer and poorer every single year, simultaneously they did have something that other members of society did not have, their status. And all of that was something that was symbolized specifically by the blade. If swords were a status symbol in history, then they were doubly so here more important for the samurai. 
Even after the Tokugawa order collapsed and the Meiji Restoration occurred, swords still had a kind of place in society even if they didn't see nearly as much actual use. Instead, what would happen is that intellectuals within the Meiji order would use them in order to establish a kind of national identity, something which would create the image and the idea of the perfect samurai that every Japanese man should aspire to. As an example of this, there's a man by the name of Nitobe Inazo who wrote a book called Bushido. This is something that would boost Japan's reputation internationally and would introduce this really fanciful version of what a real samurai was, similar to in the same way that uh, what Europeans would use chivalry for when talking about knights, you know, something that was very fanciful. That image then of the ideal samurai was something that the new Japanese government would try to use in order to model the virtue of the new soldiers that were serving the empire after. And then the 1930s come around and ultranationalism is all the rage everywhere. And to Japan and its people, the katana, that was the symbol of national pride. It was the strength and beauty of the Japanese empire. Even after World War II and the fall of said Japanese empire, this was not something that would cause the spirit or idea of the sword to just go away in people's minds. Sure, after the war, people moved away from the militarism that had dominated earlier thought, but simultaneously, they fell in love with the new kind of thing, uh, Japanese samurai films. Like, look, at the same time that you were seeing spaghetti westerns being churned out by the dozens or even hundreds in America, you were seeing simultaneously the same thing in Japan, but with samurai flicks. Like, 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 this was the big thing. And within society, this would just romanticize and cement the idea of the sword and the samurai even more. Now, this was huge in Japan, but it was the 90s and the early 2000s that would make the myth of the katana go truly global. Dozens of different manga and anime and things like Rurouni Kenshin would introduce thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people into the subculture and gain an appreciation and love of this blade. Hollywood movies like Kill Bill and The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise would put the idea of katanas into people's heads, particularly in the case of Americans. Really in popular culture, because of the 90s and the 2000s and the things that you would see inside of it, the katana just became an item that was something that was considered cool. That was really the entire point of it. It was its cool factor that mattered the most. Now, is the katana a cool weapon? Yes. Yes, it absolutely is. I love katanas and I love the history behind it and a lot of it is very fascinating, but all of that being said, the katana is still a weapon that has been so heavily romanticized over the years that, to be honest, on the internet it can sometimes just be grating. Still, that is the story of how it is that it happened and I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know in the comment section below what it is that we should do next. I appreciate all of you and love the suggestions that you provide. This week's theme is Japan, so please check out my podcast, link down in the description below because we're going to be going over the Sengoku Jidai. Goodbye, everyone, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.